2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 of the King James Version says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. We see in this verse that Peter acknowledges that false prophets have always plagued Israel. Even in the days of the genuine prophets of God, people would attempt to gain recognition and build up a reputation for themselves by misleading God's people, by claiming that God had given them a message for Israel, when in actuality he had not. In this very verse, Peter reveals to us, the reader, that there will come a time where false teachers will rise up amongst the ranks of Christianity, and they will teach heresy. What is heresy, you may ask? Well, heresy is anything that contradicts the scriptures any teaching that twists the truth. Peter warns that these false teachers will do everything in their power to deceive Christians to deny Jesus Christ. This same verse then details to us how the story will end for these false teachers. Swift destruction. The warning of Peter is becoming more and more apparent in today's day and age. I have seen ministers who stand on pulpits and say that Jesus is not the only way to God. I have seen Christian ministers who attempt to discredit the life of Jesus stating that Jesus sinned while he was on this earth. All of these statements can be described in one word. They are all heresy. Jesus is the only way to God the Father. Jesus never sinned either. He is the dictionary definition of perfect. If there are people who we should be very careful of as Christians in the world today, they are false prophets. We have been warned many times that these false prophets will come and deceive many. We were told that they will lead people astray, and it is not a lie. We can see them working in the world today. They are doing exactly what the Bible told us they will do. Their works are clearly in the world. They are taking people to the devil. They are taking people on the path of destruction. And they blind many of their victims with things they want to hear. If you are following a leader, a teacher, or a prophet because they are telling you what you want to hear and not what God wants you to hear, be sure you are following a false prophet. Many Christians have been deceived. Many have already started bowing to the devil unconsciously. And many have turned their lives to become the synagogue of Satan. Would it be the case if we, as the body of Christ, could discern the false prophets and false teachers so that we can run from them? False teachers speak against God and mix lies with the truth. It is a big sin in the sight of God. Revelation chapter 22 verse 19 confirmed that anyone who twists the word of God will have no place in Christ. The works of such would be taken away, and this will leave such person to face the second death. One sure thing about false teachers is that they have no place in the kingdom of God. The only set of people that Jesus promised to go prepare a place for in heaven are those who preach the true doctrine and those who followed the true doctrine. The reason why God warned us to not listen or to yield to the false teaching is that we will not have to partake in the punishment that will fall on us, those who are false teachers. The false are filled with lies, and the judgment that is to come upon all liars is eternal condemnation. The word of the Lord is light. It guides the path of the righteous and prevents them from stumbling. Everyone who believes in Jesus has light in them. Those who do not have Jesus will be filled with darkness. There is something common to all these false teachers, their attributes. Identifying these false teachers is hard because they do the things we do. They pray and speak of the Bible. They say things that are pleasing to the ear. And then we get carried away and not focus on the authentication of the words they are speaking. The attributes of the characteristics of the false teachers will help us to discern them and rebuke them immediately. They will always find a way to come into your life. But when you see these attributes, you must run from them. The most important thing is that we have the Holy Spirit to be able to see them more than their attributes. These people will sometimes show their attributes after they have destroyed a life. We need the Holy Spirit of God to discern them and their activities. The second thing we need is the Word of God. Without the Word of God, we will not even know there are people called false teachers or false prophets. What are the attributes of false teachers or false prophets? Number one, they please men. Galatians chapter 1 verse 10 says, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. One of the works of these false prophets is that they want to be recognized as a good person. So they please men instead of pleasing God. There are teachers of the world that used to be good teachers, but the pressure from the outside world overcame them and went after the worldly things. The gospel message does not please men. It reveals to humanity the corrupted nature of the fallen man. The gospel message points the finger at every single person and reveals to them that they are a sinner, a 
sinner that needed saving. But no one wants to hear that because it is a very difficult message to hear. I believe being a people pleaser is associated with the concept of celebrity pastors. There are so many celebrity pastors nowadays. And one of the ways you can become a celebrity pastor is by pleasing people. You won't find a celebrity pastor preaching a series on hell, because hell is a subject that does not please people. But do you know who preached about hell? Jesus preached about hell. Jesus talked about hell more than he talked about heaven, and described it more vividly. No denying that Jesus knew, believed, and warned against the absolute reality of hell. Number two, they gave little or no reference to Jesus. Just like the people who came down from Judea in Acts chapter 15 verse 1, preaching about the way by which one can be saved, in their teachings, Jesus was not made the reason for salvation. They did not acknowledge Jesus, but linked salvation with circumcision instead. Circumcision was never part of the ways to salvation. No one can be saved or go to the Father through circumcision. The only pathway that God himself recognizes is Jesus. John chapter 14 verse 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If people are claiming to be teachers and then not teaching in the truth speaking of Jesus as the only way, they are false teachers. Number three is closely linked to number two. They follow their selfish desire. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 14 says, Then the Lord said unto me, The prophet's prophecy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. The false teachers open up their mouths because of their selfish desires. They want to please themselves and not please God. A church pastor is not meant to be exalted, but you see church pastors now who look like modern-day rock stars. That's not how it is meant to be. The Lord is the one who should be exalted, not a person. If you want to walk on a dangerous line, worship a person. Sometimes, not that they don't know the truth, they have the understanding of the truth, but they will not gain anything if they speak the truth from the way they think in their heads. So, opt for lies. Number four, they are not concerned about repentance. The false teachers don't have the understanding of salvation or repentance, so they don't speak about it. Many people want to become a teacher of the word in so many ways, and they have. They don't like to tell the people what will make them sober. They don't get involved in the basis of the gospel, which is repentance. They leave that part out. The important things they refuse to touch because they don't have concern for the lost souls. They touch a part and leave the other more important part, as referenced in Matthew chapter 23, verses 2 through 3. Number five, they are good at masquerading themselves. We have read in the Bible about the wolves and the sheepskin. The wolves are always about shedding blood. They are not easily seen, and they can be mistaken for the real sheep. The false prophet hides under the disguise of being part of the body of Christ, but they are not. As Satan disguises himself as the angel of light, so also these false teachers are good at appearing as the teachers of truth, and the real teachers to be obeyed and followed. They are out there looking for who to prey on, and when they find one, they fill such with false doctrines. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Number six, they chase clout instead of holiness. The false teacher is self-important and always wants to be known everywhere. They want to be seen, they want to be heard, adored, recognized, worshipped. They find all the methods or ways of gaining followers to themselves instead of populating the kingdom of God with souls. They seek power and fame instead of seeking holiness and the power of God. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Number 7. They give a different message from a different source. The command Jesus gave before he was taken to heaven is that everyone should preach the gospel, the good news, the news of salvation. That is the real message we were told to preach. But the false teachers have their message, which differs from the message that Jesus told us to preach. They also have different sources of getting their messages, rather than following the word of God in total. The apostles, the true teachers, were so keen on speaking the truth alone and not lies. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 16 says, For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. 
Number eight, they make empty promises and give false hope. Since they are full of fraud, deceit, and craftiness, they find a way of getting people to themselves by giving false hopes. They give prophecies that will make people believe they will not face any challenges. They make them believe to be something they are not. They make promises that they can never fulfill. I have seen people who have given up their life savings because of empty promises from false teachers. And the people who give them money end up blaming God, when God was never involved in the situation in the first place. And number nine, they twist the scripture. The Bible is a manual guide for every Christian. It was written through the inspiration of God. Many people have given different meanings to some parts of the scriptures. Some people translate or give the exegesis to the Bible. The false teachers twist them to match what they want or what they want the people to do. In this way, many people are involved in this. This is why we must have a better understanding of the scriptures so that we will be able to hold on to that which is true.